uh, she bridges always the gap between the policy implementation and the difficulties we face. That is why, and always she picks up a call. That is also one of her soft skills which we uh, need the learners to develop. Uh, and she also answers the missed calls. So, with this uh, introduction of the research process and two views of the soft skill of handling a telephone uh, uh, when it is ring and also when it is missed, we open the session to Dr. Monica Dutt. Over to Madam, please. A very good afternoon to all of you, and I thank Dr. Dorothy for inviting me to this session. Um, Dr. Dorothy has been uh, doing this noble cause for so many years. We have been closely associated with her, and uh, she has really fostered a beautiful uh, environment of uh, innovation in the center, in the region center. And uh, so I thank you, Madam, for that. And um, I also thank Dr. Pasita and uh, all the team members there uh, who are doing this hard work. And in spite of so much of workload, they are still managing, we're still managing to run this innovation club, which is actually going to be with our students in so many ways. Uh, so I am really grateful to you for that. And my special compliments to the person who has designed the race poster. It's very beautiful and very cute. So thank you for that. And uh, I hope I am uh, audible to one and all. There are no disturbances, I hope. And somebody, yeah, for somebody uh, to switch off the microphones, please, so that we are able to uh, take to today's session forward. So, um, now I would like to talk to our students here. Uh, so I like my sessions to be interactive because you know it's like uh, that helps us to think properly and it's not like one way spoon feeding. So um, uh, so now today we want to discuss about Innovation Hub. So I'm sure many of you have heard about Innovation Hub. So can anybody uh, type in the message um, what do you, you think what an innovation hub is? And also, have you ever visited the innovation, any of the innovation hubs uh, nearby? So I would appreciate if you type in your answers in the chat box. Also, I would uh, briefly share a PPT with you. It's a, very, it's a very short presentation where we will be generally, we'll, we'll uh, run through the concept of innovation hub and uh, what it means, uh, what are the different types, what are the benefits, how IGNU is uh, nurturing our students so that they get the benefit of the initiatives. Uh, so let me share my PPT with you. So can anybody confirm if it is visible? Okay. Um, okay. So as you can see, the topic for today's talk is uh, innovation hub, what and why. Um, uh, actually, I prefer this way because then I can see you also. Otherwise, what happens is the whole screen becomes like one screen. So, uh, is it visible for you? Is it clear? I try to keep the fonts bigger. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, so essentially, uh, an innovation hub is a physical space it can be a virtual space also in today's day of technology so this physical space is designed in such a way that it nurtures innovation it nurtures new ideas so um, it is essentially a place where you get experts who can guide you uh, in your journey from an idea to the establishment of a startup 
also it uh, provides certain infrastructure facilities to you which you might need in your journey of entrepreneurship it could be tools various technologies new and emerging technologies workspaces where you can actually set up your own office or your own little lab and then such uh, innovation hubs provide workshops or training programs so that you get to the next level to, you get more skills acquire more skills that are required in your journey and also you get access to mentorship so that you your ideas your thoughts are finely tuned honed and then there are several networking events that are organized by these innovation hubs where you get connected to your customers or your um, other stakeholders such as you know uh, some other businesses that you might like to contact with now about the terminology i would like to say that if uh, innovation hub is nothing but uh, an innovation lab or an accelerator or an incubator so these are the words that are synonymously used for innovation hub um so essentially you can uh, enroll in an innovation hub where you get guidance where you get collaborative opportunities and essentially it is to develop your ideas which can solve problems of the society now there can be different types of innovation hubs or different types of incubators uh that depends upon the um, depends upon uh, the type of startups that they nurture because there are certain innovators or incubators sorry there are certain incubators or innovation hubs that nurture your bare idea and then they try to polish it they they know the incubator uh provides you guidance provides you expert help so that you can fine tune your idea into something that is uh, uh that can be put out in the market so it's a very early stage where your idea can be converted into, into prototype which so there are some incubators which are there to help you at an early stage also uh there are certain incubators which provide uh, access to startups who are already mm, in the market but they are yet to establish their presence uh, such kind of startups are provided the opportunities to be in the incubation unit or in innovation hub and also the established companies can also get spaces in the innovation hub also as when we discuss about uh, the types of innovation hub there are different uh, incubators which cater to specific fields such as robotics or ict or uh, space research research or even there are certain things like uh, in the health sciences medical diagnostics or agriculture uh, there are, that depends upon the different themes so they have specific fields which they can um offer to you and why specific because they have a uh a pool of experts in that specific field so you get your pool of experts in that particular specific incubator now uh, what are the benefits of an innovation hub so suppose you have come up with an idea and i i hope that you know the journey of uh, idea to start up uh, can anybody uh, can anybody unmute and tell me what is what is the journey from an idea to start up is anybody aware okay um so what happens is uh, uh when 
So when, when we talk of the journey of an innovator or when we talk of the journey of an entrepreneur, it starts with an idea. So a person can go out in the society and uh, look at a problem. And when he or she sees a problem, then the person starts thinking of a solution. So when you start thinking of a solution, you think of a process or a product. There could be a process by which the problem can be solved, or there is a product using which that problem can be solved. So, uh, for example, uh, everybody likes to give the example of the light bulb. When you think of a light bulb, why was it invented or why did it come to the market? It's because there was darkness, obviously, and people used to light candles. They wanted something that uh, that did not use candle wax or oil or such things. You know, you just switch it on and it comes on and, you know, you can think about why the uh, bulb was invented. So it was to, um, to, to, to solve a problem, the problem of darkness. So what happens is when we, when you think of a solution, it can be in the process, in the, in the, in the form of a process, or it can be in the form of a product. Now, when you are actually thinking of designing the product or the process, you need certain help. You need to make it into a prototype. Uh, you need to have a product that can be seen by people and which they can use. And to, to make that, you need certain uh, lab or a space, so to say. Not always lab, it can be done at your homes also. Many people have done that, so uh, that uh, that space is needed. Also, you would need money uh, to buy materials for that. And then after you prepare it, then you have to sell it also. You have to talk to your customers. You know, all these, these things happen. And there are so many other things that need to be um, taken care of. So that is why you need a uh, innovation hub so when you go to an innovation hub with an innovative idea of yours what you do get from there is a uh, capital help like funding you, you the innovator the innovation hub usually arranges funds uh, financial help through grants or through funding uh, they give you loans also uh, with certain terms and conditions. So access to capital becomes easier if you enroll in an innovation hub. Then the innovation hub also teach you innovation skills. Uh, there are certain uh, skills that you need to have to become an entrepreneur. For example, communication skills, you have to uh, communicate about your product to the customers how will you do that and there are so many other skills that you need uh, writing skills and then there are other skills like legal and other uh, domain skills which are you you get access to that in this innovation hubs there are things like um, like ipr protection uh, copyright protection patenting and uh, then there are things that you need to write and then there are things like no uh, no non-disclosures agreements and things like that you need to know how, what are those how to draft and such things so these things are uh, imparted to you through workshops and other programs you know innovation hub then as i told you earlier these innovation hubs also provide collaborative spaces where you can open an office of yours and then you can collaborate with other partners there. There, there can be many partners that you need to collaborate with uh, regarding the materials that you might use in your product or the transportation part or the, the storage part uh, or so many other things that you need to uh, take care of. So you get the space to work in, in these innovation hubs. Then the innovation hubs uh, have a network of individuals from industries who are there in their panels. So if you if you are catering to a certain 
uh, industries. For example, if you have devised, uh, developed a face cream and it has got herbal component in it. So there could be people from that uh, herbal uh, herbal uh, industry, pharmaceutical industry, herb, uh, nutraceutical industry or such industries with whom you can collaborate in that innovation hub so that your business can grow. So that kind of environment is provided by the innovation hub. And of course, on a broader scale, um, the innovation hubs are seen to be the catalyst for economic growth of the country. So definitely an innovation hub, as we can see, has lots of benefits here. I hope uh, till now you're able to understand what I've been telling you. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any questions at this point? And at the end of the session, we will have it. Okay, that is fine. That is fine. So I don't, uh, I have a very few slides here. So, yeah. And then we'll finish and then we'll discuss. Now, uh, has uh, you must have seen that there is a rise of innovation hubs in India. Uh, we all see. We are all, yeah, somebody's saying something. Okay. So uh, just to give you a small data, uh, India is at the 40th rank in the world out of 120 countries. India is 40th in the global innovation uh, index of, 2020, of the year 2023. Earlier in 19, uh, in 20, uh, 2015, 2015, uh, India uh, was at the position 81. So from 81 in 2015, uh, it has risen to the 40th rank in 2023. And it is on the uprise and on the rise. So that shows that the innovation ecosystem in the country is becoming robust. And one of the reasons is the rise of innovation hubs in India. Uh, now, what are the underlying reasons that we see this rise of innovation hubs in India or innovation of, in India? The first reason is the availability of talent pool. Definitely our graduates and postgraduates, research scholars are putting efforts uh, in the field of innovation, they are innovating, they are trying to establish their startups, and universities are playing a great role in uh, fostering uh, a culture of uh, innovation in the university, and that is feeding into this talent pool. So, this availability is increasing. Then, there is a growth of tier two and three cities. Uh, in fact, I was listening to a talk by our um, external affairs minister recently. He said that uh, there are more than 20 plus uh, tier one cities and now the target is 30 plus metropolitan cities in, uh, in the next five years. So similarly, the tier two cities and three cities are also growing, coming up in a big way. The quality of life in such cities are also uh, enhancing. And um, there are other associated factors like, uh, say, affordable housing or good healthcare facilities, then uh, efficient public transportation. And uh, so all these factors are uh, contributing to the growth of the cities. Um, also, there are um, there is a growth in the in, uh, infrastructure development in the country, which is contributing to the growth of these cities. So this is also helping in the rise of innovation in the country. Um, then there are uh, when we talk about infrastructure, you talk, think about uh, roads being uh, constructed. About say on an average, 28 kilometers of roads are being uh, constructed today. Uh, then there are about more than 20 kilometers of railway lines are being uh, uh, constructed. And then, uh, you know, you can you, you'll hear about all these um, 
uh, institutions of eminence that are being coming that are coming up in all the cities then you there are those research institutions the iits and the aims and such institutions which are being built so these are contributing to the development of the physical infrastructure also uh, there are certain uh, initiatives like uh, availability of venture capital which are contributing to the uh, development of the physical infrastructure so these are the factors that can help in the rise of innovation when we talk about government initiatives uh, this is for your information and most of you might know also you know actually what happens is when the government is supportive uh, so it creates policies that help in nurturing a culture of innovation it makes business uh, doing business easier ease of doing business and uh, so what happens is you know there are certain policies that encourage your entrepreneurship uh, activities then there are certain policies that help you in uh, uh, providing tax incentives there are certain uh, grants there are certain subsidies for research and development and innovation you know which boost innovation in the country also uh, if the government is keen on protecting the intellectual property that also helps in uh, the rise of innovation now if we briefly talk about the government initiatives um, you see here that these are some of the initiatives that the government of india has taken for example the startup india uh, which is a campaign that is based on actually providing financial help to the innovators and to the startup ventures essentially this this aims at boosting innovation in india then there is the atal innovation mission uh, this is uh, being played out in the educational institutions mostly where the students are being groomed for innovation and entrepreneurship both in the schools as well as in colleges then um, uh, there is the india innovation fund which is funded by nascom and uh, then there is inspire which is innovation of science pursuit for inspired research then there is national innovation foundation of india which is um, uh, an autonomous body of the department of science and technology these these uh, support grassroots level innovations uh, uh, and and help the budding innovators of the country this is at the national level now quickly let us look at what is happening in kerala because you're staying in kerala at the moment so i think the kerala startup mission is doing a fantastic work uh, right uh, not not just from 2015 but perhaps even earlier there were certain uh, seeds of startups and innovation in kerala long before the government of india actually started this work if i may say so so if you look at the website of the kerala startup mission look at the schemes that they have look at the activities look at the, uh, the 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 facilities that the mission provides so it it gives soft loan schemes to women entrepreneurs it provides supports to support to the rural innovators it has a facility of grants and a fund of funds these are two different types of financing the innovation innovative uh, ideas of the people of the students or uh, the innovator it provides marketing support there is a rent subsidy if you want to rent an office or rent a go down or a warehouse or such things there are you can you can get rent then there is an international exchange program where you can showcase your uh, innovation at the international arena as well and uh, look at the number of innovation and entrepreneurship development centers i think this is the highest in uh, among all the states in the country 425 that is what i found recently 425 plus innovation and entrepreneurship development centers so Kerala Startup Mission is doing a fantastic work in the country. And when you come to incubators in Kerala, 
I'm sure you have heard about this in your area, the Kerala Technology Innovation Zone at Cochin. Uh, in Kerala, there are a total of 40 plus incubators actually, and some of them are in your place as well. I would uh, urge you to visit these technology innovation zones. There are a few there, I've taken the name of one here. You must visit, see what they are doing, how can they help you, in which way, find out the information. I would also request uh, Dr. Dorothy to uh, arrange field visits if possible uh, of the students to such innovation zones. Of course, this uh, technology innovation zone is, I think it's being built now. It is still under construction, but there are other incubators in the vicinity and I'm sure our students will benefit a lot from that. So now after discussing what is happening in Kochi and Kerala and uh, the country, uh, let me take you through the innovation activities that we carry out in IGNO. So in, I would like to say that we have a pre-incubator kind of establishment at the moment at IGNO and we are thinking of uh, incubators per se. Uh, so we as a university do incubate our students towards uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. So we function both at the headquarters and the regional centers equally. And uh, uh, as uh, in the introduction, uh, Dr. Prasita has mentioned NCID and his activities. So I would say that uh, NCID and our regional centers work hand in hand. Uh, and uh, in, in, since 2005, when NCID was uh, uh, formed, uh, since then our directors, all the directors that were, were preceded the present director, and our team at NCID, we carry out certain activities and uh, broadly uh, we carry out these activities through these um, clubs, the innovation clubs. So we have an innovation club at the headquarters, which mainly caters to the uh, faculty members of IGNU. But the innovation clubs at the regional centers stand at 40 plus uh, uh, clubs now at 40 plus regional centers. And every regional center is actively involved in the innovation and entrepreneurship activities. Uh, we also have the Institutions Innovation Council. This is an initiative of the Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell. And all universities, all higher education institutions of the country have been directed to open this Institutions Innovation Council. And we, uh, work in a very uh, harmonious way in throughout the year to take uh, innovator students idea to develop it into a startup at the end of the year that is the effort that is being done by the institutions innovation council and the ministry also organizes competitions at the end of the academic year. So the students who are associated with us at the beginning of this academic year, at the end, when they come up with a very bright idea and a good prototype, then we nominate them to the ministry. And uh, they, uh, most of the times they do very well, in fact, uh, there are students who have received grants. One student, his name is Nandu Surendran. He's from Kerala only, and he has uh, received uh, an award of rupees seven lakhs about two, three years ago for his work from the ministry. So the, and we have many more success stories, uh, which maybe we'll have it in another session, but this is how we work in IGNU. And, uh, uh, this enrichment session that we are having today is one of those activities where we like to create awareness about innovation and entrepreneurship among the students. We try to motivate them to take up uh, uh, entrepreneurship as a career and then slowly hold their hand in that journey till they come up with a bright prototype and then they, uh, a proof of concept, then they develop a business plan and then later on they are on their way to establish a startup. 
So this is how we work. And uh, as far as funding, etc., is concerned, funding comes at a later stage when the prototype is uh, is uh, prepared, it's market ready, and then if and then uh, because we are a university, we are at present confined to the pre-incubation activities. But as I said in this third point, we have proposed incubators. One is proposed from a region center in Kerala itself, and the other one is proposed at the new headquarters. So hopefully, uh, very soon we will see the operation beginning for these incubators at IGNU. Um, so now what are the benefits that our learners have get? Uh, from the past, uh, from my experience uh, in the past, I uh, would say eight years or so with this activity, which, which started in a vibrant manner uh, in 2018, um, uh, after uh, the IIC became operational, although we had the Innovation Club activities before, much before that, but it, the, we got an impetus in 2018 and after that, what we found was, uh, you know, at present we have about 2,000 students associated with us. There is an IGNU Ujjami portal where the students register. That uh, IGNU Ujjami is available in the website. Uh, at the moment, I think the website is under construction. So maybe, you know, you can check after a few days where you will see there is an IGNU Ujjami uh, portal where the interested students can um, register for getting such kind of help uh, if they're interested in, in entrepreneurship and startups. So in all these years, interacting with all these students, what we have found is that our learners really do get inspired, they are motivated, and they start creating, getting new ideas, and they, they are cre become creative. So they have an idea, and then they start working on the idea. Then what they do is then slowly, after some time, at their own place, they create their prototypes. And then they present, because at every step here, we organize competitions. For example, when we inspire our students to ideate, to come up with good ideas, we, we um, organize idea competitions. And uh, we really get good entries and, and we, we uh, recognize them, we reward them, and uh, so that is how they get motivated. So the best ideas are taken forward, and the ideas that are not so good are mentored. So we ask our students to go back to the drawing table and then again think about the idea and again come up with a better version of the idea. Then the same thing is with the prototype development. We again organize innovation competitions, the students participate. Again, the same process follows. Then after the prototype is developed, uh, we try to help our students to how to take it to the market. And then we tell them through workshops how to develop their business plans. We have a good panel of experts in all these um, activities. So they come and they mentor our students to develop business plans. And then after that, again, we have a, a business plan development competition uh, we, we select winners, they are awarded in a function here in the headquarters. Sometimes they are awarded in the regional centers also. And then they, the students who have developed a good business plan, they go to the next step and that is the startup development. And there too, we have a startup uh, competition and uh, the best winners, the best uh, entries are uh, awarded. And so this journey continues. So this is the journey that our students undertake. And also, in addition to that, they have access to our mentors who are subject experts, who are uh, financial experts. They're experts from industry. They're experts from I, uh, intellectual property rights, company uh, secretaries and such. So we provide, we try to provide access to mentors so that they can uh, set up their startups. And then there are access to various resources, study material, or um, any specific domain related uh, resources which they get access to. They, when we organize these 
the competitions or uh, such festivals. Uh, uh, we, we have organized a lot of festivals also at headquarters and in a few regional centers. There is a lot of networking happening between the startup founders, between the experts and the startup founders and such things, industry experts. And there is a collaboration that happens. Uh, and then what happens that it, it kind of motivates a student to become more competitive. In fact, over these years, we have found a very simple, shy students who have become so active now uh, that they are coming out of even their states and going to different other states and different institutions also to gain more knowledge or to participate in competitions and winning. They're winning awards in lakhs. Every month we get a news that one of our students has uh, competed in a certain activity and uh, they have won uh, good uh, awards. So that boosts their morale. Of course, there is this knowledge sharing where students and uh, mentors share their knowledge and other experts share. And more. Why I said more? Because it essentially develops the personality of the student at the end. I mean, as I told you just now, we have seen students who are very shy, who do not talk, to very communicative, uh, erudite, I mean, well-spoken uh, students who, are very, who have developed their personalities. And they, they come back to us sharing their experiences, sharing what they have received as a result of what we have done. So uh, I think with that, I'd uh, stop here and uh, I'd like to know what are your views and uh, any questions that you might have. So thank you so much.
incubator is that uh, the incubator usually provides financial help, financial assistance. So when so a university per se is not in a position to offer financial help in any way, be it grant or be it funding. So for that, one has to establish a section Eight company or a society or such a, such an entity that can enable the disbursement of the funds. So that is the only difference. So the only difference between a pre incubator and an incubator. Otherwise, all the other activities are the same, where you organize workshops, you organize cleaning, you organize mentoring sessions, you organize competitions. You organize exhibitions, demonstrations. Uh, then also you provide spaces like lab facility or or office space. You know, internet connectivity. So those things have to be there. So these are the elements that you have to keep in mind when you are thinking of uh, establishing an an incubator at your site. Also, I might like to add, you may like to consult with Dr. K. Rajesh at uh, R.C. Trivandrum, who has taken an initiative also in this direction, and uh, you will understand clearly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Dr. Rajesh, any ideas to share with the resource person? You kindly unmute your mic. Good evening, ma'am. I'm from Chairman uh, Puchin region. Uh, I have already completed two fine courses uh, in 2024 itself. Mm. But uh, it is not credited in my ABC ID. How can I, it be added? Can you please repeat your queries once again? Is it audible? Yeah, it is audible, but the disturbance was there. That's why we couldn't hear it properly. Is it okay? Yes. Can you please continue? Ma'am, I have uh, completed two courses from Maths YM. Yes. 
in 2024 itself i am mnpc student in igno now okay uh, but uh, it is not accredited in my abc id you have to write uh, to the help support which is the email address is given okay it uh, because igno is not connected to swayam uh, portal and uh, uh, because uh, we also observe that certain uh, students telling that the, the courses are not listed the computer under your certifications if it is not there there is a help desk in uh, uh, the nptel portal and also Uh, in uh, igno so uh, uh, depending upon where you have completed there is uh, always in the examination uh, hall ticket also that help uh, uh, line number is given the email id sorry not the help line um, phone number it is the email id it is given you can write to them and they help us out and still for even for MC, nptel courses they ask us to wait so it all depends upon because recently they have changed the uh, full uh, uh, website also so what uh, what has been completed before 24 is not respected that is uh, the case of completion so you have to write to them keep writing till the problem is solved and one thing i found uh, the similarity of uh, uh, the problem solution with swayam is all swayam problems are solvable because uh, if there is uh, the journey of learning is there already recorded and you have already earned your certification that's why they say that you have to download your um, certificate as it is so that whenever you need you have to um, produce it so you have to write to them and get it yes ma'am i have got the certificate uh, but uh, the credit is not added that's all is what you have to write to them we are not the person who uh, reflect your okay okay that that's okay yeah. any more queries can we come forward Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I said um, let us give them time to reflect, and also I would just like to say that if any of you uh, have any queries or any thoughts about it, you can write to Dr. Dorothy or Dr. Pusita, and uh, we can answer you on this top this today's uh, topic. Or if you have any idea that you want to carry forward, or if you have already you are working something creative and. Take it to the next level. Uh, you can just contact us. You can contact Dr. Dorothy, contact Dr. Prasita, myself, and uh, we'll see what can be done for you. And uh, so, if there are no questions, I'd like to wish you all the best, all the students who are listening. That's it. Uh, suggestion of uh, waiting to reflect and get back to what you need. is basically uh, one of the life skill which we can implement for other aspects of our life but the waiting period is difficult and so also the expectation of what questions you are going to ask definitely there won't be any funding from it you it can be a, a diving board for you to reach the next level and we may not travel with you but we definitely you will reach the next step But when you get in touch with them, with this few words, we also want to place on record our gratitude to Sri Muhammad Ansar, who prepared the poster, and who, along with Dr. Uh, Reshma Suresh, facilitated uh, the back office operations for the conduct of the live through the Facebook live session, uh, and also. Uh, facilitate the recording to be placed in the YouTube channel of Igno Regional Center Kitchen, and we are also grateful to Dr. Prasita Unikrishnan, who is the nodal officer for Innovation Club activity at Regional Center Kitchen, and all colleagues at Regional Center Kitchen for facilitating us to move ahead in this venture. And uh, with this uh, few words, we also want to say. Few uh, tips when you come to writing exam, 